In this video, we'll show a lot of Oslo functionality with a micro reader example. The origin of this video comes from a webinar that we did in May 2020 on a fluorescence microplate reader. In that specific example, Oslo was used to design a lens and then it was laid out into this microplate reader and this is the modeling in Trace Pro. So what happened, the way the video was actually done for the webinar is we had the Oslo design portion, then it was put into Rayviz to do some opto mechanics within SolidWorks, and then that was taken and imported into Trace Pro. And so here within Trace Pro, you can see we have the source that emits some light. It's collimated by this lens, goes off a beam splitter, and the Oslo model will assume a pellicle beam splitter. Then it's focused down onto a sample. The sample has fluorescence, and the light that's fluoresced is then focused onto a sensor. So it's the same lens in three channels, collimated in between with a beam splitter. What Dave Jacobson did so nicely is he actually laid out a system within the video that's all in Oslo. So this is what we're going to focus on and we realized that we could show quite a bit of Oslo functionality just with this example. Specifically, I've already gone through the system description. We're going to talk about how to use some system notes to document what you actually have. We're going to show surface notes, really useful for things like that pellicle beam splitter. Then we'll do pickups reflection, surface control and coordinates just to show you some functionality there a little bit on configuration and drawing conditions and then we'll do some variables error function and optimization work to fine-tune the system because initially we don't have it set up completely correctly we do need to do some optimization the key thing is to start we have the entire system laid out in the webinar what Dave did is he optimized this lens just making it into a nice collimator in this video going to optimize it in this configuration with all of the three lenses laid in. In terms of how it works right now, it's not a very good system. The collimation is not that great. You can even see if you look closely here, left click and zoom in on this window, you can see that it's not retro reflecting that well because we don't quite have it set up correctly. It's at the wrong distance and the asphericity is not correct to make it retro reflect nicely. We don't have all the spherical aberration corrected as well as there's a little bit of other aberration in the system. So we really need to fix this. Okay, so at this point, let's talk about the system notes that we have to document the system. Inside of Oslo, we have this notes field that's inside of the surface data spreadsheet. And there are five fields that you can actually see, you can type into them, but there really are 10. The last five you can only access through the commands, but they're available there for you to do more documentation. It would be nice if these operated like a normal text field, but it turns out this is done line by line. So often in a system you might say, I really want to know what the system notes are. It's a pain to look here. I can't see all 10 lines. Well, if we go to our help system, so just go to the Oslo help. I'm actually not going to do it. I've got something pulled up that's ready to go already. So when I type in notes and I go down here to surface notes, we can click on this and what it actually does, oh that's surface notes, my apology, we want system notes here. Surface notes is another thing. If we go to our system notes, we have the OPC command will print them out and it also gives you information, the OPC command, on how to actually enter them in including those additional fields. So here if I want to see my notes, I can just type in OPC and then SNO would work. You can use question mark or just pull up the options. And here are all of my system notes that describe what's going on. We do plan to include a version of this lens in future releases of Oslo, which will be uh, starting with Oslo 20.2 uh, will be the release that we expect to have this in. So here's our system notes, really useful to have. One other comment I'm going to make is that Dave Jacobson in the video, when he optimize the lens he had to use a focal mode but here we're coming to a focus so we don't need to do that you can turn on and off focal mode within the general conditions for your specific lens all right great stuff so far the next thing we're going to talk about is surface notes so sometimes you might have something in the system like this you might have 
uh, system part that's supposed to have a filter on it it's nice to put a system node in so that you remember that's what that surface is supposed to do in this case this is a pellicle beam splitter within our surface data spreadsheet we can enter in a surface note into here and if we want to see that later one easy way to do that is to just put lens print out the lens data and you can see surface 3 is marked as a pellicle beam splitter. The other thing that we'll talk about in a moment is that it also shows up as 9 because it has to go through that system again that whole system. Now let's talk about or it has to go through the system off of the sample and that light that's fluoresced as well. So let's now talk about the actual layout of the system. It might be tempting to do this as a non-sequential system, and you certainly could lay something out like that if you really wanted to. But in this specific case, if we're careful about laying the system out with some pickups, we have an amazing amount of flexibility and control over the layout. So here's our system laid out. We have the lens laid out one time here. I'm going to turn the drawing on, and if we turn the drawing on, you can see which surfaces I'm picking. So here is surface two and three. If we go farther down, this is four and five, that's actually selecting this lens down here, but it actually, there's two versions of that lens because the light has to go down and then back up and through it. Then we have seven and eight is back up and through it and 10 and 11 is going through the top lens and the amazing thing the wonderful thing about how we can control this layout let me just turn the draw off is surface two and three is the first time through then we hit the pellicle beam splitter that's a reflection then we go through this lens the first time so that'll be what looks i'm sorry yes one and two for this first lens, then three is this reflection, four and five is the first time through the lens, five is a reflection off the sample is how we model it. Uh, let's see, or is that six? That's six, and then we have to go to seven and eight to get through the next lens. Then if we look carefully here, the way I've laid this out is I've made sure to put a surface in here for the pellicle beam splitter it's not entirely necessary to do that because this is transmitting this time and because it's a pellicle we're not modeling you could also do this with a cube beam splitter or some other type of beam splitter where you would need to include those effects in your system we've chosen not to do that in this specific case so as we see here with the pellicle beam splitter I just go ahead and keep a holder for that surface this time and then 10 and 11 goes through this lens and then we have the sensor plane. So if we look at this, the way to really control this, because we're using the same lens everywhere, is to use pickups. Now there are two kinds of pick there are multiple kinds of pickups in Oslo. One of the things you can do, I'm not actually going to do a pickup on this surface, you can do curvature pickups, minus curvature just flips the sign of it. You can also do, in terms of pickups, you can do thickness pickups that have similar things. When you do pickups, you can multiply, so you can have things like, I want this space to be twice as much as this other space. You can add in offsets. You can say, I want this to be three millimeters longer. There's a lot of functionality in setting this up. So with our pickups, we can set up our lens correctly. We do have to be careful that when we do reflections that we have the signs correct so the thickness has to be a negative sign after a reflection when you have an odd number of reflections an even number flips it back to a positive so this lens is set up correctly this way set up with a lot of different pickups to make sure that the lens is oriented correctly and with the correct signs so just a bunch of pickups set in here if you change one of these numbers it'll change it for all of them that's the power of pickups in terms of the reflection off this surface Oslo's got really nice capability to do things like this so with the coordinates we have a 45 degree coordinate about the x-axis which is coming in and out of the page and then what we actually do it tilts 45 degrees and if you do tilt and bend it will reflect off of it and then bend 45 degrees if we set it up as a reflection type surface so that's here number three 
Uh, number six is just a straight reflection. I went ahead and put a hatch on that drawing, be on that um, to show that it's just a reflection surface. The pellicle, the first time through, reflects, but the second time through, it actually transmits. So I didn't put the reflection hatch on that specific surface. One other thing to show you is a little bit about surface controls. So some of these you'll see an F in this right hand column. Let's go to the image surface one. What this surface control is doing is forcing it to draw. Sometimes a surface isn't going to be drawn like if it's a dummy surface in air or the image plane by default in many systems is not drawn. So we force Oslo to draw that specific surface. Here I forced it to draw the pellicle beam splitter the first time it goes through and then we see where it is even though the second time through it might not be drawn if I didn't have that turn on. In this case I didn't bother to turn it on I just put it with a note. So it's nice to use those surface controls in those cases at some point. All right, that's not everything that we did with this. There's other functionality we can do. If you notice, there's a second configuration. The second configuration in this actually doesn't do anything optically. The purpose of this second configuration is to simply allow us to draw the rays that are coming off at the edge. So I draw one ray in the middle for the on axis or the optical axis in this case, and then we draw the plus one and minus one to the corners for this one by one, one millimeter by one millimeter object that we're modeling here. So this is just nice to show you that you can do more than zoom lenses and things with the multi-configuration here. Of course, it's not focusing quite right, but you can see that I have these additional fields that I can draw with this. So how did I set that up? Well, if we go to the lens drawing conditions, there's a few places to go under lens. It's also here. There's also UOC DRL. If you notice with this setup, we're drawing the aperture stop. That's nice to have on. We have three rays drawn in the first configuration, which is the one that's only showing the axial rays. And then here for configuration two, we've drawn the one ray that goes straight down the axis and we've drawn a bundle of three rays for the minus one and plus one field point. So just giving you an idea of how flexible and great it is to use different configurations for things beyond zoom lenses. Now if I do this, I need to open this back up, it would reset it to the configuration one and I'm off to the races again. So that's the only thing we're doing with the second configuration and the drawing conditions. Okay, as I've said a few times, this lens isn't really quite optimized correctly. So now let's go ahead and set it up to optimize. So the system is an aspheric singlet. If you can see here, we have an asphere on this more curved side of the system. So if we go in here, we can see we have some aspheric coefficients defined, but they're not actually being used at the moment. So we want to actually take advantage of those. So one thing we can do here, I'm going to do direct specification. Now I'm going to define this as a special variable that will open up my spreadsheet that allows me to change variables. You can also just click on this with variables. So I now have this first surface, which is going to be used as my focus. But remember, because I have all these pickups set up, it's not only going to change that first surface, it's going to change the other two as well. And then I'm also have put pickups on the surfaces themselves, which not only controls things like the curvature, but on a radius of curvature, but also controls things like the aspheric coefficients. So we have defined here the A, D, A, E, A, F, and A, G aspheric coefficients. That's the R to the fourth, R to the sixth, R to the eighth, R to the tenth, uh, rotationally symmetric coefficients, and just the standard A sphere. If you want to see those, you can just click on this special and you can see what they're set to be right here. We have not taken advantage of any of them at the moment. All right, I'm going to right click and clear that. I like to keep that clean. So we are set to go here and optimize in terms of the variables, but we haven't actually defined a figure of merit to use yet. If we go to our operands sheet, I've already entered one in. This system needs to be a collimator. So one target that we want is after we go through this lens the first time, which is after surface two, so it would be thickness two, so to speak, that we're using. We want to actually have it collimated. So I've set up a first order paraxial target for the marginal ray to be zero. By not putting another number in here, it's going to target it to zero. I put a weight of 10 on this. 
and one is for here is the wavelength two is being used for the surface number if you want to know more about that you can click here on the help it goes to this PU command but we're really interested in the corresponding operand there's a few ways to get at this this tells you wavelength and surface number for configuration we only care about configuration one in this case because all we did with configuration two was some graphics stuff so that's ready to go we can now generate a an error function for this I'm going to use the default Oslo spot size and we're actually going to go ahead and use all wavelengths with it we could just do this monochromatically we're really not going to correct for color exactly in terms of having just one lens but we go ahead and use all wavelengths so it's going to at least minimize the color effect for all of them with the weightings according to the wavelength I'll show the wavelengths in just a moment because I haven't done that yet and in this case we're going to also click append to the existing error function and that's to keep that PU operand in there if we didn't do that that PU operand would go away we can hit OK and uh, as I do this, I'm going to point out a couple of things. If you go to the field point set, it's created additional field points. Sometimes it's nice to keep this cleaned out. I believe if we get rid of one through three, we've really altered nothing. One through three didn't have operand targets attached to it like the next three did. So often when I do this, I make sure I have the field point set and then the ray set, which I use RSE to get there a lot. I make sure this is cleaned out a lot. Otherwise, you end up with way more rays than you need. If you see, I probably have more in here than I need. So often when I get a lens and I'm resetting some things, I get rid of all those additional rays if I'm not using them. But you don't have to do that. It doesn't harm anything. There are some limits in the program is the only real negative to not clearing that out. Just bookkeeping wise, I like to keep things nice and tidy in general. The other thing is the wavelengths we're using in this is a visible wave band type of thing. It depended on the source for the micro reader is determining what the weights are and what our wavelength should be. Okay, so we're all set to optimize now. So to optimize, we could just go to optimize. We're doing nothing fancy here. We're just gonna use straight up damply squares. Another thing we could do for this is just hit the ITE command. I just did that a second time. You see it's not really improving anymore. If we go and update the drawing here, you can see now it's retro reflecting nicely. And if we go to look at the optimization, look at that. It's really improved a lot and it's changed all of these lenses at the same time. So you can even optimize when it's set up in this way. So you can see Oslo has a lot of functionality for layouts and a lot of tools built in to make layouts much easier to manage with things like pickups and, and very good coordinates. One final note here is earlier in the video we had some pickups but you can also apply the pickups to different aperture radii in other words how large the lenses are and also the material so those have been added on and also an extra set of coordinates has been added onto that pellicle surface but because the axis is going a different way the rotation about the x-axis is different here. It's got the negative sign because the axis is going the other way. And here we do a return to surface afterwards, all done in one, which keeps the axis pointed in the same direction. We're drawing both of them, and you can see that they are both actually coincident the first time through and the second time. Lots of power and capability in Oslo, so you could also change materials and the lenses will stay the same size if you constrain everything correctly with the pickups.